Hey everybody, it's Martha. Thank you so much for being here. This is not a, you know, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, Monday thing. <laughs> this is just a craft with me. Um, this past week has been a bit of a challenge for me, so I um, didn't make a Finish It Friday video. And I am working on several things at once. And there's no way I could finish them in one video. So I'm just here to share with you. So I've been um, poking around on YouTube, as is what is fun to do when, um, you know, you're kind of out of it and you can't really focus on any one thing. So um, these are the envelopes that I was making out of the eight by eight sheets of paper and I decided to take the rest of this paper pad which is this one here I think I showed you previously and probably I got this I don't know where I got it it doesn't have a um, Tuesday morning sticker on it so it probably wasn't Tuesday morning might have been Joanne's probably not might have been Michael's maybe <laughs> I don't know. I don't know because I can't find any good paper pads anywhere anymore. Might have been Hobby Lobby. Who knows? But I love them because they're eight by eight. And what I did was I took all the maps and I took them out and tea stained them. And then um, after I started making all these envelopes and stuff, I decided why not just take the rest of the batch out and tea stain them. So I decided that kind of late yesterday afternoon and I ended up putting them out, but of course they didn't dry because it was late yesterday afternoon and we are now in September. In, you know, July or August, they would have dried over, you know, in a few hours in the afternoon. Not so much in September. So, um, I also made a bunch of other things out of the same papers and I have been having a little bit too much fun. Um, so I wanted to show you, and I didn't prepare very well, so I apologize for that. When I have weeks like I had this past week, I get a little scattered. Um, so let's see. Now this is not one of the papers. This is a leftover of what is probably, um... Oh, it's either a calico collage or a, um, hmm, can't remember the other name, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> anyway, it was a strip of paper I had left over, and I just decided to fold it up as well, and I didn't tea stain it, I just inked it, and it looks like the tea stains anyway. So, so I sat and cut all of these 8x8 eight eight pages in half, and so they came out strips like this. And as I said, I had done a lot of the maps. So yesterday I just sat and inked them all because basically that's what I felt like doing. And then I got several over the last couple of days, I've gotten several um, sort of decorated. So basically what I did was mini collage on them. And I did not do the backs because my plan is to take a page. Let me get a page. Take a page and say this is a signature page and my plan is to either put it like this right so it unfolds and you still have the entire it, it's not hanging off of a page like this okay so I'm trying to make sure I'm on screen because um, I've tried this mirroring mirror my iPhone to my iPad can't figure it out. I, I looked on YouTube and they said to download this one app and I downloaded it, but I, I, it's not working the way I want it to. So anyway, I'll have to figure that out on another day. So this way you can open it up. So literally you can glue the hole back down and just have it attached to your page. And you could decorate around the page if you wanted to. Or you can glue these two edges and make it like a belly band. So if you had a tall tag, that's as tall as your page, um, but it would have to be skinnier than this one probably, you could slide it in. <laughs> hey, 
screen, get on the screen, Martha. You could slide it in and use it like a belly band. Or um, if you had a smaller tag, let me find one here, if it's possible in my box of stuff here. If you had, oh, hold on, I got it. Okay, so this is way small. But if you glued it here and here and here, you could have a tag that fits and stick it this way and have the tab sticking out off the edge of the page. Or you could put this closer to the edge of the page and glue here and here and have it as a tuck. But either any of the choices, I would put this here and have it open so that when it's open, you're writing on the flat page and not hanging off. I don't like embellishments where when you open them, it's hanging off the edge of the page and your book is this thick. How are you supposed to write on that? It makes it too hard. So I would put this up higher. Plus a lot of the things we make are bottom pockets, tucks, corner tucks, whatever. And it makes the bottom of the journal a lot bulkier. So having something that opens near the top like this or is taking up this space up here near the top is really cool because then, you know, it's all your bulk isn't at the bottom. I hope, I hope that was clear as mud. Um, anyway, so here's a tag that I'm talking about. Like if you put this here, you could have that sticking out there and just glue around these three sides. And then this could be like a tab off of a page, but it actually comes out. So that would be about the right size. And then if you used it as a belly band, it would be like that. And the, you could literally have the tab sticking off the top if you wanted to. So it's like a tab at the top of a page. So any who's, that's, that's my theory. <laughs> so I'm running with it. So I did do some decorating on some of these. And um, I, I enjoyed that because I tried not to overthink it and not do too much. Um, and I just took my scraps, which helped me use up scraps and it was fun. Um, some of them are a little sparse, but I'm okay with that because they're just general. They're just, I just wanted general things to stick into journals. Um, I have a problem with making things ahead of time that don't go with the journal theme that I'm doing. And I feel like these could go in just about any journal. Um, yes, yeah, some of them would be more specific to nature journals or whatever. But, um, and this one, this one because of the compass here, and I put these words wor world travel on there. You can barely see them because then I just sewed everything. But um, this is an English page. And this one I think is Italian. And this one's English and American, you know. Um, and this one, I think, is um, uh, maybe, I don't know what that is, maybe French. I don't know. But I took different pages from different books that I had and just tore them up and put the different languages on there. And I love the compasses on the ones that show the compass. I was able to fold them and show the compass. So I just love the compasses. Um, however, <laughs> however, there are some that uh, I don't love, like the orangey colors, and this doesn't have a compass on it. Um, this has a partial compass on it. Uh, you know, this one has <laughs> another compass folded over. This one had a big compass, so I made a big flap. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter what size your flap is. If there's something on the paper you like, that one I did the same thing, big flap. Doesn't matter, because you're, you're, you know, you can make these envelopes. You could sew them or glue them right up there and make it an envelope and a tuck spot. But I like that they're an extra writing space. If you're gonna glue it on a page and take up the page as writing space, I like the idea of having the writing space. So these will probably still get decorated. Well, those will still get decorated. Now these, I kind of like the colors in them. And I'm, I'm probably gonna put something on them, but I also like the colors of the maps. So, um, you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of digging the, the neutrals and I think they could stay 
fairly undecorated. So I'm just going to leave most of these, like especially these here. They're very, you know, very neutral, very pale. And I really like those papers a lot. So, um, those over there, those over there, and those over there. Okay. So there's those that I was working on. And I did not cut all of the papers, um, all of the 8x8 eight eight maps. I started getting a little, a little bored. And I have plenty of those sizes, right? Like, those, those would fill up several journals. <laughs> So there's those, and I'm just going to tuck those in the front of my box so they're out of my way. So then poking around on uh, YouTube, like I was, um, and these are 8x8 eight eight papers, and that's what I made. That's what I made these out of, and of course, I cut them in half, right? I cut them in half this way and rounded the corners. So I'm very happy with these. I'm excited that I have that many of them. So tucking them back in my box. Um, so as I said, I, uh, and this is, there's probably at least, I don't know, two thirds more, um, you know, two or three times what I have here, um, sitting in the box, drying in front of the fan. I needed to uh, have a sip. So um, I was watching YouTube, like I said, and then I saw Pam at the Paper Outpost who did this other little fold. And that's what I got out of it. And I got that one. And I got that one. And I think this is one of the first ones I did. And this one as well. And this one as well. So more envelopes, more using up pages. Um, again, they can be decorated if you want them to be. But the cute part about this is you have a little tuck here. You have a little tuck here for the flap to go in. And again, you can just glue the back of this down. I'll fold it up real quick. You can just glue this part down on a page and have it open up. right and again huge writing area now this is bigger than my page when it's open so yeah you'd probably have to use a writing board to write up here out here this would you know if you put it on the folded side of the page this would flap over onto an extra um you know no martha <laughs> sorry this would flap over like that. This would be up there. You might need a writing board or something under these areas here. But that's okay, right? So, um, so, <laughs> yeah, sure, Martha. So, all you do is, and, and let me show you. Real quick. That's not right. <laughs> That's right. Oh, it's been a few days. So that goes under there. You cannot fold it into here like we did with Carol's. Remember Carol's? I took this and I folded it. You know, I fold it. It's basically the same fold, right? And you, you fold this into here. Carol from Free Spirit Arts. And then this flap you can fold down as far as you want. I could have folded it down further and put it inside the tuck. I could have folded these tucks in further. Y you can do many of these and I have more. I just don't know what I did with them because I had a whole bunch of them. At least I thought I did. Anyways, so what you're going to do with this one and I will show you on a new one. And like I said, um, hopefully I will <laughs> remember how to do it because it's been a few days. But um, I did it the way that um, Pam did it and then I figured out if I did it this part a little deeper they stay shut better um, because this is a very shallow a very shallow part there and it pops up then I figured out how, how to get it to lay flat so what you're going to do is um, I'm going to take this 8x8 piece of paper right 
and you, I just want to check something. Yeah, I don't know if that'll show or not. Okay, so what you want is you, you need to have exact, pretty exact matching edges. And I think because I tea stained this paper, it may um, not be exactly 100%, excuse my arm in front of the camera, may not be 100% square, but it's close enough. <laughs> close enough for me okay now um the folds depending on what now carol not carol uh pam used her her grid board so i'm gonna put the grid board up here try not to spill anything okay and you can use the grid board and line up your center line here um she did it kind of this way with the point at the top, I could, I would recommend lining up your bottom so your bottom is straight, but you still have your point at the center line here because that's gonna tell you where your center is. However, what I did was I did the lazy man's way, which is Martha's way. <laughs> I matched these two points here and I just put a little tiny fold. Just, just creased the edge right there. So now I have the center marked, and I don't know if you can see that, but it's I didn't mark it with a pencil or anything. I just have this little this little mark right there, and I folded this in. And you don't want the point to overlap, but you want it to be right in the center there. And then you want this up here, and these two edges will match, right? So if you were going to do it by using your grid mat. I would line the point up to the center. Oops. I would line the point up to the center and make sure you are straight along this bottom edge here. Okay. And then take this down and fold it up. Okay. And you can use this line here. I hope I hope I'm on screen. I will slide this up a little. Use this line here or, or your points over here, you know, whatever, whatever gets you a straight line here. Because you don't want it wonky doodle that way and you don't want it wonky doodle that way. You need to have this crease be straight. Okay, that's important. Now, she also, um, Pam, she <laughs> also measured like um, two and a half squares but she was using a six by six piece of paper so um i already know where my center is because i have it lined up here but i also have that little fold mark there right that we made earlier yeah you can just do that and just put a little crease there and what you want to do is you're going to go over center and depending on how big you want this portion to be will depend on how far you come across, but you can't have it like this because then that's too much overhang there, see? So you kind of have to figure out like, so if you're a measurer, uh, measurer, <laughs> use your grid board. I'm not, I eyeballed it, you know, and sometimes they worked out and sometimes I had to refold them. And then you can put this over so that you're not crushing your point on the one you just folded. But you want, you see how these are different sizes? These have to be the same size. So I'm not, I'm not really teaching you very well, but um, you know, it's my way. So um, I'll do that one a little narrower. And see, I eyeballed it to see if it was around the same distance here and here. Um, that's just my way. Now, the other thing you can do is you can fold this all the way down like that. And then do it this way. And you can see that way, 
these two are not still not the same distance. So you have to do it a few times to work it out. Like by the time I ended up making these, I had the folds perfect. I could eyeball it and see where I had to do it. Those are a little closer to being the same size. Oh my goodness. And you get so much paper folded in there. Okay, so those are more, more the same distance apart from this point to this point, right? Okay, now, this is hard to see, so I'm gonna stick this in here. You see where these two intersect? You only wanna fold that back as far as that intersects and crease it really, really well, okay? Crease it really, really well, all right? All right, so, and now my, my eight by eight folded is four inches here. So if that helps you, if you have an eight by eight piece of paper, making it four inches on, I didn't use my grid the other day at all. I was doing that in front of TV. So, so I didn't have a grid, um, but this seems to be the right size. So you have this little, this little triangle here, right? You fold it that way, it's a triangle, yeah? Then you're gonna open the triangle and you're gonna match the point to the point up here, okay? Now the part I figured out that Pam did not do, at least I didn't see her do it, was I then take this and fold it this way, and I take this and fold it this way. It sort of makes it, um, it softens it a little bit, and then you take your flap out, and you sort of have to, you know, work the corners here because there's a lot of paper over flat, overlapping over flapping <laughs> and then you fold that down and you see this one is bigger than this one okay so depending on how far down you fold your flap um, let's see I think I think this one might have been the first one I made one of these one of these two was the first one I made but I like them with the bigger the bigger triangle here but that does mean that these, and if you take your bone folder or card or something and really crease these papers once you decided on what, um, what size you want it to be. Like I said, I have um, eight by eight. These are eight by eights. So this one ends up being four inches across. Seems like the perfect size. However, If you want to take 12 by 12 paper, and I have some 6 by 6 paper, but it's very thick. And I don't think the thick papers, I mean, this, this paper is not that thick. Okay, this is probably like, a, I don't know, 20, 24, maybe 28 pound. And of course, the tea um, gives it some texture it opens up the pores let's see if it says on on here 180 sheets no it doesn't say what weight the paper is and this is probably a little heavier than this so i don't know how it's going to turn out i would not go any heavier than this paper here and it might be a struggle with that paper but my other six by six pads are all um let's see Let's see if I have one here. Um, I do have this Prima one. And this is six by six. So this is pretty soft. So we might, well, no, it's, it's pretty firm too. This is probably about the same weight. And this doesn't have a weight on it either. I'm just looking to see. And I love Prima paper. It's like my favorite paper in the world. Um, Stamperia is a wonderful paper, but I love Prima. I don't know why. Oh, wait. <laughs> Six, not eight. <laughs> that didn't look like it was in half. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just cutting these in half. And again, 
you can tea dye them, you can ink them, you can spray them, you can do whatever you want to the backs. I'm not going to do that right at the moment because, you know, it's time consuming. And then pick one that you want. I think we'll just choose this one. So you can see the difference. So it's going to be smaller. And I haven't done a six by six yet. So again, you're going to decide what direction you want. I think I'll do it this way. And if you do have a directional thing, um, like a pattern, writing, something like that, and you want it to be on the flap, you have to figure that out, of course. Okay, so again, we're going to center it. Yep, you can see this is really far away from me. All right, so my favorite, this is thick. This is a lot thicker than that other paper. So my favorite centering is just doing that, not lining it up on the grid, and folding this up so that the point is right in that center crease that I made. And that's the best chance I have of getting it straight. Well, the best chance I have, because I'm lazy and I don't want to mess with the grid. <laughs> All right, so we're going to fold it up and crease it. And then I'm going to fold this down so it's already down. And then I'm going to flip it back up. Then I'm going to fold this across. So you can see, I think, you can see this little bit I have from this point to this point. So I'm going to try and equal that on the other side. And I have to work the paper a little bit. Okay. And do try to line up your fold like this one isn't really isn't really lined up that great. Line up your your folded edge here and try and get the same distance from this edge to that edge. Now you can see I have a little white showing because the paper is very thick. <laughs> All right, and you can do this fold either way. This, this tri-fold here, but you just want to do it. Now, this is going to be a tiny one because you got to remember I'm using smaller paper and I didn't fold them in as much. And then you're going to fold, Pam called it a beak, and she made a cute little noise, which does help. See, you have the beak. What? What? Okay. Fold that down. So I now have the little tiny beak. You're going to fold that down and fold the tip into that. And you see how it pops up? If you take this, right, and you fold it this away and fold it this away, it sort of loosens that paper up. Fold it down, and it tends to stay a little bit better. Increasing it helps. And there's a littler one. And that one is uh, one, two, three and a half inches across. So let me try it with another sheet. And see if I can get the beak a little bit bigger. So I'm going to center it here. Find my little... Find my crease. See my crease? Fold that right up, tip right up there. Okay, fold that up. And then I fold this down first. But that's not how Pam did it. So if you want to go look at her video, I will link it below. Okay, so you're going to bring this across. Now I'm going to bring it across. And I have to measure to make sure I'm not going to... Okay. I'm going to bring this across just a teensy, teensy, wincy bit more. I think I need my other bone folder to really get that to crease. I'm going to bring this across. And I'm going to try and make this part equal to that part. So literally, if you lined this up, point here, and you 
follow this line here, this would probably come out just a tiny bit. Lining up the folds at the bottom. Oh my goodness. So the lighter the paper, the better this is. Now, I don't know if you can see this here. Use this one, it's thinner. See where these two points cross? Fold that back only to that point there. And I could go just, oh man, once you crease this, I mean, put even a tiny part in that. Then you're gonna bring this forward. Woo! <laughs> Open up the beak, right? Point to point. Then I'm going to fold this side over and fold this side over, flatten it out again. Then I'm going to bring this back down and crease it and tuck it in. And once you get going on these, it's so much fun. It really is. So now you have a ton of little, little flappy envelopes that can be opened up. And again, you can do whatever you want to the inside, right? How fun is that? So we now have all kinds of little flappy, fun envelopes. And again, if you just glue these two sides down, that could be a belly band. You can glue these two sides down. It can be a tuck spot. You can glue the top and the bottom just of this part here and it can fold in you know you could put a tag again in that way or that way so again all kinds of fun little envelopes for your journals to um, just pop in whenever you get a journal done and you can just have them at the ready and again, something that you can sit in front of TV and do pretty easily because once you get going on them, you figure it out. You can even take things like um, book page. Let me, let me get. As long as it's square, it doesn't matter. Oh my goodness. It doesn't matter the size. So to get it square, you just... You know, you start with a rectangular piece of paper, right? Then you, as long as these corners meet up down here, it should end up square. And then you just chop that off. So I don't even know how big this is going to be. This is... One, two, three, four, five, five and a quarter inches. It's not four, it's not six, it's not eight. So you're going to do the same thing, right? So have it folded. So if you have an abundance of book pages you want to use, this is a much thinner page, much thinner paper. So much nicer to work with. Fold that up, fold that up, fold this down, fold it back up. Bring this across and bring this across and try and make them the same size, but don't get your point, you know, don't get it so far over that you can't pull this one across without bending your point. Okay. That's a little too wide. So I think if I remember correctly, Pam used six by six and she had it like I want to say like two and a quarter inches or something so you bring this across here and then fold the beak up fold <laughs> open the beak fold it up get it straight get that point Get, oh my goodness gravy. Okay. Oop. There we 
go. And then we're going to fold that, fold that so it's flexible. Bring this back down and tuck it in. So you can literally do this with any piece of paper that you can square up any size. So there's a little book page one. Um, take the Prima. Let's see what I got here. I took a piece out, there it is. And again, you can use paper that you don't particularly love. And you can decoupage over it. You could decoupage over it before or after you make it so that you can see where the... Oops. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops. It's not a mistake, just a design element, right? Okay. I'm going to bring these two. Let me bring you in just a teensy bit. Bring these two. Crease it, open it up, find that center crease, put that up, fold it up. Again, this paper is very thick. Oop. Crease it, open it up, and I'm going to bring, try it there. Try and make these the same size here and here. So I hope you're playing along. I hope you grabbed some paper. And then again, you can open either beak. So again, right here where they cross, you only want to fold this back to where that cross goes. Fold the point of the beak up, then I fold it in this way, and I fold it back that way, and then I flatten it back out again. It's really hard to see with this patterned paper. And then this comes down, tucks in there. There. Again, another flat, fun thing to have. And this one is about uh, three inches across. And I use the six by six paper. So there you go. Fun with papers and stuff that you never knew you could do. <laughs> right? So I think the secret to getting them to lay flat, like this one's poofing up, is to really get that crease in the center to be flat. Once this is flat, I think the rest of it will go flat. But this is a really thick paper too, so that's why that one is sticking up more. So I hope that was fun for you. It was fun for me. Um, the other thing that I've been doing is just doing some stamping. I've organized my room a little bit. Um, I've done some stamping and I have stamped a bunch of words. <laughs> And uh, this saying is one of my favorite, and I do have a stamp for that. It is, uh, A Flower Touches is the name of it, and it is, I have no idea. No idea. I probably got it at Michael's, and because um, it's got one of those gray dots on it, and I think they're the ones that go by you know, look at the dot and see how much it costs. Don't know if they still have it. Got it a while ago when I was making cards. Um, these are word stamps that I got a while back. And they're not my favorite, but, you know, and I don't use them all because they're not my favorites. And then this was, oop, this was the, the new little stamps I did in my previous video. I just tore them up into strips. Some of them I tore into separate words. And this is my Tim Holtz 
stamps that I did on my leftover cardstock. And then um, I have the little snap-on stamps here, which actually need to go in my stamp box. So I've decided to keep this stuff close for the moment because I don't use it enough. And the reason I don't use it enough is because it's not close by. So I hope you had fun. I appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. I love you all. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're safe. I know many of my friends are in California, Oregon, that area, um, Colorado, where they're having devastation from the fires. And this week has been very rough on me because my mother-in-law is in the hospital, although she's doing pretty well. Um, she has to go to rehab and eventually she'll need another surgery that could be quite complicated and tricky, even though it's not normally, um, but because of other health issues she has. Um, anyway, there's that. And then our dog got sick. Um, she wasn't feeling well. And two years ago, she'd been diagnosed with kidney failure. Well, she went way downhill pretty quickly within about a week and a half. And so her numbers came back really bad. And three days ago, I thought we were going to have to put her down. Um, she is rebounding a little bit. But it is what it is, and it's not going to be pretty um, from here on out. So there's that. And so that had me really down. Um, the fires and devastation out west, COVID, and just life in general sort of got me down this week. Um, so I had some stomach issues, which is where my stress usually, it's either that or dizzy spells. <laughs> That's how it manifests. And so I had to spend some days resting. And that was the other thing. I wasn't resting because anytime something happened with the dog, um, she's, you know, they're in our bedroom. And anytime something happened with her, I was waking up and listening and wondering and worrying. So, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of one of those things where you um, just continue to worry because there really isn't a whole lot else I can do. Um, we are, we've changed her food. Um, she was refusing to eat and she only weighed nine pounds two week, uh, about three weeks ago. And then she lost a pound within two weeks time frame. Um, and that's one of the side effects is they don't want to eat anymore. And um, kidney failure is not cool, let me tell you in a person or a dog, but in people they can do kidney transplants, but in dogs, not so much. And it's expensive. And there's that. So, you know, <laughs> there's always money involved. So anyway, thank you for being here. I'm sorry I, I didn't do a video yesterday for Finish It Friday. This is where I was. Um, I'll probably just continue to play with these and decorate some more of these um, as I feel like it. And then I've watched some other videos and there's some fun things out there. I have a book where I've written down ideas and I'm going to do them. So look for more. Um, the next project is going to be the CD sleeve. Um, and I don't know what I did with it. It's here. Hold on. I think it's in the, yep. It's going to be CD sleeves. So maybe Make It Monday will be the CD sleeves. Um, you do need stays on ink because other inks will not ink onto, will not stay inked onto uh, the cellophane or plastic of the, of course now I can't find the one that I made. <laughs> it's here somewhere. Don't know where. Um, so I haven't tried it yet with the stays on, but the person I watched, I will link in that video when I do it, um, tried several inks and I did try my archival ink and it did not stay, um, it did not stay on the plastic. So she says stays on, dries instantly on the plastic, and it's easy to use. So you need some CD sleeves, stays on, some uh, stamps that you may want to use on the edges. Uh, maybe some flower stamps or some script stamps or some... Uh, uh, swirly decorative kind of stamps, which I don't have a whole lot of, um, you know, could use something like that. Um, I used this one here, but I don't have a whole lot of these types of stamps. So I've been keeping my eyes open for those. Um, haven't found anything yet that I fell in love with. 
but you know you can use I'm looking to see if I have anything else I can show you um, I have some I think these are well these are fairies uh, let's see like you could use these or you could even use the fairies um, you could use the mushrooms oh. you could use script um, you know anything that you've got that you might want to pull out to experiment with so you need stamps the ink the CD sleeves and then you're gonna make journaling cards for the inside so book pages or cardstock. I'm sorry for my arm in front of the camera. I know it's not not the prettiest sight. Just trying to put things back, which isn't working too well. Um, so, um, yeah, that's what you're going to need for Make It Monday. Um, decorative papers to decorate the journal card that you're going to put inside. Now, you could use napkins on the outside. You could use stamps. You can use uh, papers to decorate the outsides if you don't want. If you don't have the stays on ink and you don't want to stamp it or you don't have any good stamps, you can decoupage napkins or whatever. I just thought the ink idea was fun and I didn't have any stays on because I don't like the smell of it. But I did go buy some at Michael's. So in the U.S., check online to see if your Michael's has it in store. And if they do, you can get it there um, and use a coupon, of course which I did. So that's going to be Make It Monday. As long as nothing bad happens, today is Saturday. <laughs> so I that just became a whole lot longer than it was meant to be, and I didn't mean to whine about what's going on in life. But there it is. That's why I wasn't around. Love you guys. Take care. Happy crafting. Be safe. Be well. And thank you again for being here. Love y'all.